One of these Pokemon games is real, and the other is fake. Which one is which? Yes, fake Pokemon games, or I suppose the proper term would be reproduction Pokemon games. Like most retro video games, the Pokemon series has had its ROMs dumped and archived online for anyone to play, not on the best gaming console, the PC. But what if you wanted the authentic experience of playing a Pokemon game on its original hardware, but don't feel like shelling out the same amount of money you would on a brand new video game? That is where these reproduction cartridges come in. It's a genius idea, take the ROM, shove it onto a cartridge that maybe fits into a Game Boy, and bada boom. You've got the perfect scam, I mean product. This is the difference between real and fake games to make sure you don't get deceived. My first real experience with reproduction games was when I was minding my own business at the shopping mall. And then I saw it. A funky looking vending machine with Pokemon games inside. At first glance, I was pretty sure these had to be fake, especially for the price and quantity available. When I first saw this vending machine, they were $10 each, but last time I was there, I saw the price had increased to $15 each. While it's perfectly fine if this is how you choose to play your Pokemon games, the biggest issue is that these could easily be mistaken for legitimate cartridges by unsuspecting Pokemon fans. So, as mentioned, I have two copies of Pokemon Gold right here. One is a legitimate cartridge, and one is a reproduction cartridge. So, let's Let's take a closer look. First of all, Pokemon Gold has a very unique shell. You can see these speckles molded in, which give it that mineral effect we also see in legitimate Pokemon Silver cartridges. That is the easiest way to tell at first glance. When you take a closer look at the label, you'll notice little differences across it. This is because the reproduction uses box art and then just adds the Nintendo seal on the bottom left corner. It's even stretched to fit onto the cartridge, so the Pokemon logo is a bit squashed. And of course, the legitimate game has a shiny label. Taking a look at the back, you'll you'll even see they have different screws used to hold them together. And once you open them up, it's obvious which is which. The real cartridge will have a bore that takes up the entire space, and will have a battery that manages the time-based functions of the game. The replica, of course, couldn't be bothered to include this because it is just the ROM put onto the board. But even if you aren't able to open one of these up, you could just tell that the reproduction cartridge will feel a little light. But this might require you to have some experience and to know about how much it should weigh. If you're curious, the real game weighs about 23 0.97 grams, and the fake one weighs about 15.19, almost half as much. Sure, now you know the physical differences between the two, so hopefully you don't get scammed. But let's say you know what you're buying and are fine with the reproduction. How does it play? It works pretty well. It fits inside a Game Boy Color and actually functions. But remember that battery the real game had that I said managed the time-based functions? Well, on this cartridge, the clock in-game doesn't work. I was playing at 1.10pm when I set the clock, and it hasn't moved since. Well, actually, that's a lie. It moved backwards by a minute. Also, every time you save the game, the day will change. So you can play through Johto with the power of Dialga in your hands. While this Pokemon Gold cartridge works well, you'll be missing out on the little features that require different days of the week or times of the day. Doesn't sound too bad at first, but remember that because this is the game that introduced the day and night mechanic, you need certain times of day in order to obtain certain Pokemon. If you were an Umbreon fan and you picked up this game for the nostalgia, imagine the shock you would get when you realize the sun would never set. Sure, you could just plan your playthrough in advance and have an eternal night, but the fact that the time feature doesn't work takes the choice away from the player. And so, in the case of Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Silver, and Crystal, I would say these reproduction cartridges are not worth it. If you're someone who doesn't care about playing on the legitimate cartridge, just play the ROM on your PC, or even your phone, for free. But if you're someone who cares about playing the real game officially, then they're still available on the 3DS eShop. You can even transfer Pokemon you catch in those to your modern game, which you can't do with emulators, reproduction cartridges, or even the original games. And even then, the fiasco of crazy Pokemon game prices is starting to settle down. They're starting to return to normal. Still a little high, all things considered, but for a real game with better collector value, it's not terrible. Though I would still suggest waiting a little longer until the prices drop even further. For me, I'm all set. I bought my copies of Pokemon Gold and Silver for about $10 each. This was of course before the insane price increase, and it was because the batteries had to be replaced, which I'm capable of doing myself. Sometimes it pays to be an engineering school dropout, but I know it's really easy to just recommend buying the eShop versions of a game when talking about the first two generations. Generations 3 through 5 aren't very easily available, so what about those? Well, I can at least talk about some of the Game Boy Advance games. 
as I have two copies of Pokemon Sapphire, one real and one fake. This fake at least gets the label right, but the colors are a bit too dark and overall not as shiny. Also, the shell is too transparent. As you would expect, the real game weighs more because there's still no batteries, so no clock. I also picked up this fire red because I don't have my own legitimate copy, and I wanted to play through it just for fun. But the plastic is so cheap and misshapen that it won't even fit into the cartridge slot. It's literally unplayable. So in the end, I cannot recommend any of the Game Boy games. Not that I would in the first place. I really started with these because of the suspicious vending machine that I wanted to look into, so I have no experience with reproduction DS games. I think time functions should work better with those because the DS itself keeps track of time, but I would still just stick to emulators on PC, because you still can't transfer Pokemon or connect to the Pokewalker unless you have the original games anyway. But the only true recommendation I can make for this video is to buy games off the eShop while you still can, and pick up the 3DS Pokemon games for cheap within the next 5 years before they fall into retro nostalgia territory. Typically, I have no real issue with reproduction collectibles. Not everything is easily available or affordable. They can be decent ways to fill in your collection as long as it's mostly made up of legitimate collectibles, especially in the case of games or products that people might have missed out on because they either came into the fandom recently, or they weren't even born when it originally came out. But I do have a real issue with playing a game in a way that is genuinely inferior to other methods available. I also have an issue with people mass producing illegitimate products, and not only selling them to unsuspecting consumers without clarification, but also raising their prices to jump on the trend. The quality hasn't improved and the value of only real games has gone up due to increase in demand. This is still the same free ROM shoved onto a cheap plastic case. But at least now we know the difference between a real and a fake game. But anyway, hey, this is GatorX, and welcome to the new end screen. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, channel memberships are up, so hopefully in the next few videos, we'll have some names on that TV, and a big thanks to everybody, especially you watching right now. But uh, anyway, you can follow me on Twitter, and I hope you have a great day. Play me out, commercial. Poochieena! Beautifly. Shroomish. Torchic. Draco! Gladius. Gladios. Uh, no, uh, Corfish. Mudkip. Kecleon. Zigzagoon! Makahita. Wilmer. What's happening, Pikachu? Pikachu? Lotus. Tickle Blah, blah. Blaze again. Rated E for everyone. <laughs>